Today on In The Shop, we're going to be talking about checking your fuel pressure, installing a Ford Blue Spring kit, and the importance of making sure your fuel pressure is at the optimal level. So a few of the things you're going to need to do this are a couple of different size pry bars, 22 millimeter wrench, 13 sixteenths wrench, 3H drive extension, ratchet, 3H swivel, T27 Torx bit, 6 millimeter Allen, nice little pick with a sharp 90 degree on it, 7 16 or 11 millimeter deep socket, then obviously, you know, a tool to take off the intercooler pipes, and then a fuel pressure gauge with the right fitting for the 6 liter. Um, this setup can be found in like a transmission test kit. Uh, you can buy that right at Harbor Freight. Those work perfectly fine. And this is also the same size fitting as a oil rail pressure tester to do the air test on an oil rail. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description of that. And of course you're going to want to use a blue spring kit. Uh, I prefer the one from Ford. There are a few imitation kits out there on the market, but I feel like the quality of them is a little low. The, uh, the housing that it comes with is made out of a cheaper material and to be honest with you, I wouldn't really trust the integrity of the spring. So the first thing we're going to do is install a fuel pressure gauge. Now to do that you're going to need a 6 millimeter Allen with a swivel, a little bit of an extension, you can go right in here under the black intercooler pipe or on the, uh, the O3's you have that metal pipe. You're going to look under, and right on the front of the fuel bowl, there's going to be a little port. You go right in there, sneak in with the extension, just take that plug out. Once you get the plug out, you can thread in your fuel pressure tester. That fitting we talked about earlier. Doesn't have to be in there crazy tight. If you have a good O-ring, you can just put it in hand tight, spin it by the hose, and it typically doesn't leak. Once you get the hose on, put your gauge on. And then we're going to go turn the key on, cycle it a couple of times, and watch what the fuel pressure comes up to. This particular truck actually has pretty decent fuel pressure, but a lot of these, as the, the factory return spring gets worn down, will actually only come up to maybe 40 PSI. I've seen some of them a little worse than that. Um, the goal is definitely to get it up over 50 PSI. The higher the better. Um, I mean, obviously you don't want to go too high, but if you can get it up into that 60, 65 PSI range is, is definitely ideal. So now we've checked the fuel pressure. We're going to want to go ahead and do that blue spring. It's relatively simple to do. I mean, the average entry-level guy should be able to do it in the driveway in a, a couple of hours at the most. Um, there's a few things that have to come off, but it's, it's pretty easily accessible. So the first thing you want to do is take out the air box. Uh, this one had like a K and N air intake in it. So I went ahead and took that out ahead of time just cause they're a little bit of a pain to take out. Um, but the next thing you want to do is take the intercooler pipe off. So I use the seven sixteenths, seven sixteenths deep socket. Use my little 3 8 gun. Loosen the top clamp up. And sometimes you need an extension. To get down to this bottom clamp. Once you get the clamps off. You can take a pry bar and put it 
behind the intercooler pipe, and then you'll see on the back side there's a little lifting hook. You hook your pry bar in there, you can usually pop the intercooler pipe off just like that. Then you can go ahead and take the same pry bar and kind of rotate it back and forth. pop it off the intercooler. It does make it a little easier if you pull this hose off that goes to the degas bottle. You can just squeeze the clamp with your hand, pop the hose right off, just uh, rest it over to the side. Just watch out if this hose drops down and you still have the coolant in the truck, you will get some coolant to leak out of that. Once you get the intercooler pipe out of the way, you can take your pry bar, slide it underneath the fuel line that comes out of the uh, passenger side of the bowl, put it over the radiator hose, and then push the radiator hose down. Then you can hook the other end of the pry bar under the negative battery cable and it holds the upper radiator hose out of your way so you can access the fuel pressure regulator. So one extra little tip, if you take a zip tie and you put it around the fuel line, and cinch it down tight, it'll stop you from losing the tube nut. If this thing falls down next to the head between the thermostat housing, it's, it's a pain to get out. So. Put that zip tie on there, it'll stop that nut from coming off. Once you get that on there, you're going to take your 13 16 wrench and crack free the tube nut. Sometimes the fitting that stays in the regulator will spin with the tube nut. If that's the case, that's when you need your 22 to hold it on the other side so you can actually back the nut off. Take the tube nut off, make sure you get the little o-ring, you can just push that right out of the way. At this point, I like to loosen up the fitting, you're going to have to switch this fitting over to the new regulator housing, so if you take the wrench and put it on there now, crack that fitting free, it'll save you from having to deal with that on the vise or on the bench. and. Just makes your life a lot easier. So now we can take the four T27 bolts that hold the regulator cover on. I like to start with the bottom one here. Um, it's the hardest one to get to because this radiator hose is kind of in your way. So get that one out first and then start to work your way around. As you get to the last one, you need to make sure that you're kind of holding on to the regulator cover. There is some spring pressure behind this, so you don't want to just kind of let it fly off on you.
So on some of the older trucks, you have to install this little black piece of plastic where the regulator itself goes. Um, this one doesn't need it, but it'll be pretty obvious when you need to. Right in here where the valve and the spring goes, this will need to be installed. On this truck, you saw I pulled that little white spill port out. So we'll stick that back in there, the new one. Take the new blue spring. I always like to inspect the little seal on here just to be safe. I've never had one bad, but it doesn't hurt to check. It's a pretty important piece. So we'll slide that in. Stick the new gasket in the housing. And you're ready to start bolting it back up. Now one thing that's important here is making sure that you get the spring lined up inside the hole in the housing. Once you get that in there, apply a little bit of pressure and then start the bolts. Install the new O-rings that come in your kit on your fitting. And we can install that. Then the line. So I like to leave the intercooler pipe out for now and uh, cycle the key a few times just to make sure you have no leaks. This is also a good time to recheck re the fuel pressure. Uh, I left the gauge hooked up the entire time, but if you want to get out of your way while you're doing this, you can. But then you can reinstall it now while you're checking for leaks and verify that we had an increase. So as you can see, now we're at almost 70 PSI. Once you've verified there's no leaks, you can take out that fuel pressure tester, reinstall the, the test port plug, and then start to reassemble. Sometimes these plastic intercooler pipes can be uh, a little bit of a struggle to get back on. So one little trick I found is if you take, take a little heat source, you can use a heat gun, a lighter, or even one of these, and you just kind of warm the pipe up. And you want to make sure you're not melting it. We're just trying to get it a little bit warmer than, than room temperature. Then it should pop right on. So one of the most important things about having good fuel pressure is uh, protecting your injectors. Now, inside of your injector, there's a piston that the high pressure oil acts on. So as it comes in past your spool valve, it pushes down on this piston. There's a spring underneath that piston. Now, below that is the actual injector plunger. So, the high pressure oil comes in, pushes down on the piston, the piston pushes down on the plunger, and then this is where your fuel is, and then this pushes it down through the nozzle.
So now if you have low fuel pressure, what can actually happen is you have upwards of 3,000 PSI at times coming at the top of this and there's no fuel inside the injector. So this uh, plunger and the piston can actually impact the bottom of the injector. What that does is it beats up the plunger, it beats up the piston, and then in a real extreme case, I've even seen these come down with so much force that they bounce back up and break the bolts that hold the spool valve to the top of the injector. Then, you know, you lose the little pieces of bolt down inside the engine and it just makes a big mess. So another suggestion I have is to make sure you check your fuel pressure on the wide open throttle. Um, the test we did out in the shop, which is the Keon engine off test, it's a good test to indicate where you're at, but you really need to make sure that you test it under a load just to verify that you're not dropping out fuel pressure. The minimum spec you should see is 45 PSI under a load. With the blue spring kit installed, I really don't like to see anything less than 60. Ford's minimum spec is 45. Um, I think if you're less than 60, you should probably start exploring to see if you have any other kind of uh, restrictions in the system or anything else going on. But 45 PSI is the minimum. So that's it for today, guys. If you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and if there's any other videos you'd want to see, just drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys.